please subscribe. The new 8-cylinder Aston Martin DB11 puts us in something of a philosophical bind, as it poses the question, how much is the right amount of too much? Does a sports car need a completely ridiculous amount of power, or will merely excessive do? With due deference to Mark Donahue's oft-quoted assertion that superfluity would arrive only with the ability to spin all wheels in every gear, this smaller engine version of Aston's coupe makes an excellent case that downsizing can have an upside. The DB11 V8 is the first implementation of Aston Martin's agreement with Daimler to use the German's twin-turbocharged 4.0-liter V8, the same engine that powers high-performance models in the Mercedes-AMG and Mercedes-Benz families. While the engine also will go into the upcoming replacement for the British brand's smaller Vantage, it makes its Aston debut in the DB11. With 503 horsepower, its output is the same as in Mercedes AMG C63S, against 600 ponies for the DB11's V12. Both DB11 engines have near identical to work outputs, however, with the 4.0-litre's 498 pounds to foot representing a reduction of just 18 pounds to foot compared with the V12. The factory stayed at 0 to 62 mile per hour time for the V8 of 4.0 seconds is just 0.1 second behind that of the V12, the DB11 hit 60 miles per hour in 3.6 seconds in our recent test of the V12 model. Claim top speed suffers more, falling by 13 miles per hour to 187 miles per hour, although we didn't have a chance to confirm this deficit during our drive in Spain. A key benefit of the new engine is that it's both more compact and lighter than the 12. The V8 car weighs 254 pounds less than its brawnier sibling, says Aston, with most of that weight coming off the front axle. The good news is that, until you start the V8, nobody need know that you have stinted on the cylinder count. Only the sharpest eyes will be able to spot the differences that distinguish the V8, dark headlamp bezels, new wheel finishes, and two air vents on the long hood instead of the V12S4. In every other regard it looks identical, with the same muscular design, stunning profile, and immaculately tailored cabin, the last benefiting from a Mercedes-based infotainment system. As with the V12 DB11, we must mourn the passing of Aston's traditional handbrake, a fly-off lever position between the driver's seat and door, now there's just a boringly conventional, switch-controlled electric parking brake. And although gadget-loving MI6 operatives might appreciate the motorized cubby that sits between the front seats, which seems like a pretty good size for Walter PPK, waiting for it to power open or closed is considerably less convenient than a manual slider would be. The Sound and the Fury Any doubts about which power plant your Aston has shipped with are dispelled the moment the V8 fires to life. It sounds magnificent, louder and rotier than the V12 at startup, awakening with the brap rather than the bigger engine's creamier tone. From then onward it just gets angrier snarling under gentle use and, when pushed further, emitting a hard-edged tone that sounds as good from the driver's seat as it is from outside the cabin. Performance gives away little to the V12, indeed, the V8 feels keener at real-world speeds. The AMG engine delivers its peak to work fractionally higher up the rev range than the V12 does, but it makes a more dramatic entrance arriving with a forceful shove where the bigger engine takes longer to build boost. The V8 DB11 seems quicker to react, and throttle response is outstanding. In AMG models, the V8 works with either a 7 or 9-speed version of Mercedes's G-Tronic gearbox, which use a multiplet clutch in lieu of a toward converter. But Aston has paired it with the same ZF8 speed automatic as the V12, with the more conventional design including a toward converter. Fears that this transmission would fail to play nice with the highly strong engine soon proved to be misplaced. The single most impressive aspect of the powertrain is how integrated the two feel. 
We noticed some slight throttle surging at very low speeds, the DB11 needs to be maneuvered carefully when parking, but from walking pace and beyond, the transmission delivers impressive smoothness when left in drive, and responses to manual inputs are quick enough to rival a dual-clutch gearbox. The engine's punchy to work delivery also kept the stability control busy on the twisting and wet roads in the Spanish Pyrenees. On the day of our drive, the rain in Spain fell mainly on the mountains. But the conditions also showed the fundamental balance of the chassis to be near perfect, with front and rear grip levels that allow the big coupe to feel agile without becoming scary. The stability control can be fully defeated, albeit by a convoluted process through a sub-menu selected with the steering wheel control switches, but it feels plenty exciting even with the Guardians on duty, particularly in its most aggressive Sport Plus mode. The reduction in mass over the front axle can be felt, it's not as if the V12 DB11 feels like a late 1970s Cadillac Fleetwood, but the V8 car is markedly fleeter afoot. While steering inputs yield strong and positive responses and there are just 2.4 turns long to lock, the steering wheel itself feels a little too big for hustling. The V8 DV11 might be primarily designed to go touring grandly, but it can pass muster as a sports car. There is some heave on rougher roads with the variable dampers in their soft GT setting, but switching them to sport delivers discipline without any significant increase in harshness. There are complaints, but they are few. Although refinement is generally impressive, we experienced the same wind noise from the top of its doors at cruising speed that we previously noticed in the V12 DB11, something that should have been fixed in a car heading into its second year of production. While the cabin is a huge improvement over older Astins, some of the switchgear still feels a little plasticky, the prime example being the toggle switches on the steering wheel that select the powertrain and chassis modes. Small Savings Given the price of a DB11, the $17,500 savings that comes from selecting the smaller engine isn't a particularly tall heap of beans. 10 seconds with the options list could more than wipe it out. But there are reasons other than cost to choose it, and not just the marginal fuel savings. The V8 model might have less power and a lower top speed, but it offers at least as much character as the V12 while sharpening the rest of the driving experience. Overall, we'd say the choice between the two is almost perfectly balanced.